with both bulbs failing at the same time. I'm fairly certain it is the ballast, but I'll remove the bulbs and test them in another light just to be sure. If you haven't removed these before, one end is spring-loaded. Mine are 8-foot F96 T12 fluorescent bulbs, so they're pretty long and awkward, so just be careful handling them. As expected, both bulbs worked fine, so I did decide to take apart this lamp and get at that ballast. The first thing you're going to do is twist those connectors in the middle 90 degrees. What that's going to do is allow you to remove that metal cover that will actually give you access to the wiring and where the ballast is located. So carefully turn that tab at 90 degrees and then pull the tabs out from the end of that lamp and take it down. One cover will cover one half, and so on the other side, you're gonna repeat the process, and again, just very carefully pull those tabs out and set that second cover aside. Now you have full access to all the wiring and where the ballast is located. Next, using a non-contact voltage tester, what I wanna confirm is that there is power going to the ballast, but there is no voltage detected on the blue or red wires. This tell me, tells me that the ballast has failed, and then I will go ahead and take it apart. Next, I'm just going to commit to memory how my lamp is set up. So as you can see, there are two blue wires going off to the right-hand side, and there's one red wire which goes to the left, and it does go down to the two bulb holders down there. There is a yellow jumper. I won't be touching that today. Before I can remove all the wires, there is one small piece of sheet metal uh, in the center that I'm just gonna pop that out and set it aside. Next, I'm going to remove the bulb holders on the right. So I'm just gonna bend the frame up a little bit and then pop out that right end and then uh, slip those wires uh, so that I can just lower that whole bulb bracket. I'm going to be pulling the wires out of that piece. Okay, once I safely step off the ladder, when I look at the ends where the wires go in, there's going to be a hole right next to the blue wire, so I'm going to slip a very small screwdriver or all into that. That will release uh, a metal mechanism that allows me to pull that wire out. I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. Again, just push a screwdriver in that small hole, and that will release uh, your blue wire. Next, I'm gonna move my ladder over to the left side, and I'm going to, again, bend that metal up gently just so I can remove the bulb holder on the left. When we inspect it, it's gonna be the same thing, only since that yellow wire connects the two ends, we just need to release that red wire again, putting a small screwdriver in that hole. Now, this was the original ballast, which is about 20 years old, so there was actually a connector uh, from the power supply to the ballast. Uh, I won't be using it, but I will just disconnect that, and now I can um, remove that ballast. So I'm just gonna take a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna speed things up. I'm just gonna loosen one screw. Once I drop that little screw out of the hole, then I will be able to bend that end down and then slide the tabs out of the left side. That allows me to remove that ballast. Then it's just a matter of kind of untangling those wires um, so that I can pull the whole uh, setup down. I won't be using that connector on the power supply wire, so I'm just going to clip it off. Next, using my wire stripper, I am just going to pull off a little bit of the cover on that copper wire, just so I've got about a half inch uh, for that new wire connector. These are super handy, by the way, and I will put a link in the description to all the tools as well as the ballast specification that I am using. With the ballast removed, I'm just gonna set it on the workbench and I am going to compare it to the new ballast. As you can see, the wires are all bundled and I just need to spend a little bit of time untangling them so that I can lay them out in the proper positioning. Okay, so everything looks good. So I have the two white, blue wires going to the right and I have the single red going to the left. And I have my black and white in the middle, which I will be using orange wire connectors con to connect that to the power supply. Now we are reversing the process and the pre-cut uh, and stripped blue wires, you're simply going to push them into the same hole where that you removed the old blue wire from 
Then give it a little tug just to make sure that it's seated properly. You definitely don't want the wire to come out after you've put everything back together. So again, do the same thing with the other blue wire. Slide it in to that hole where the old blue wire was. Give it a tug and this side is done. With the right side done, we're gonna move down to the left where all we need to do is push that single red wire into either side. But again, once you slide it in, just give it a tug to make sure that it's seated properly. Next, we're gonna work in the middle and we are going to install the ballast. So we're gonna slide the left side into where the tabs are located. Then we'll use that screw we removed to secure the ballast so that it cannot fall and I'm screwing it in by hand and I'll speed things up a little bit here and I just got a flathead screwdriver and I'm just gonna crank that thing down until the ballast is being stably held inside that fluorescent um, uh, fixture. Now I couldn't remember uh, if I had turned the power off so I did use my non-contact voltage tester just to verify there was no power. Then I went ahead and lined up those wires and just using a small orange wire connector, uh, I just twisted those on, black on black and white on white. You could also wrap them with electrical tape, although I chose not to, and uh, I just decided to move forward as is. With the power reconnected, now I'm just bending those wires to get them tucked up into that cavity uh, nice and uh, even so that I can put those covers back on. Now I'll put that center metal plate back in, which again, just uh, slides it, the tabs slide it in some holes. And then if you just bend the other side, you can get it fit in there. Again, get those wires tucked up inside so it's all positioned well. Then we'll go to the other side and start working on that right side, the side with the two blue wires. Again, we're gonna put the end in one side and then bend the other side a little bit just to clip in that uh, bulb holder. Now, before I move to the other side, I am just going to take a minute and clean up those wires and just fold it so there's not too much slack hanging down. Again, this is just so those cover plates, which I'll do at the end, go on a little smoother. We are now in the home stretch. I am just reinstalling that left hand side. So same process, just at putting in the tabs and then bending the metal on the front side, just so that left side bulb holder clips into place. Make sure it's in there nice and sturdy. And then again, let's take any slack in that red wire and just kind of fold it a little bit. And we'll clean up those wires because we are now ready to reinstall those cover plates. Let's quickly recheck our work. The ballast has been securely installed with the left side under the tabs and the right side secured by that screw. The power supply has been connected properly with the orange wire connectors. The red wire shoots down to the left side and the two blue wires are connected to the right hand side. So everything looks good. So we will reinstall the cover plates. So I'll put the tabs in underneath the right connector and then I will install it in the middle and then rotate that clip 90 degrees to hold it nice and stable. I am simply going to repeat the process on the left side, installing the tabs first, moving the cover plate up into place and then rotating that tab 90 degrees to hold everything nice and stable. Again, let's inspect our work. The cover plate looks good. There's no wires sticking out. The tabs are rotated in the proper direction. And now we can take a voltage detector. And once I've got the power back on, you'll see that we're picking up voltage at the bulb holders. So this is a good sign that everything is working properly. So now we'll go ahead and install the bulbs. Now, uh, I did actually forget to turn the power off. so. I was pleasantly surprised with the bulb turning on as I installed it, but I didn't shock myself. I did kill the power uh, when I installed that second bulb. And again, you wanna be very careful, especially if you've got these long eight footers like I do. So let's check the power and see if everything turns on, which it does. This project is a success. Thanks for watching. Check out the description for more information and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos.